which treatments for male pattern hair loss are scientifically proven to be the best. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this question by analyzing a study that identified and ranked the best hair loss treatments available. And I think you might be surprised by the results, so make sure to watch to the end. Now in the study, authors compared the following treatments, right? We had the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, finasteride as well as dutasteride, and then we also had topical and oral versions of minoxidil. Now these aren't all of the evidence-based treatments for hair loss, but these are the heavy hitters when it comes to the literature uh, for sure. Now if you're familiar with the literature, you would know that there is no study directly comparing all of these different treatments together. So how did the authors do this? How did the authors compare all of these different treatments in terms of efficacy? Well, what the authors did is they ran a type of study called a network meta-analysis. And basically what they did is they took a whole bunch of different studies, 23 studies to be exact, and a lot of the studies were randomized control trials, so they did have very high quality evidence. And then the researchers used the magic of math, statistics, and the principles of evidence-based medicine to amalgamate all of these studies together, to really get all that data together so that the researchers could essentially simulate a larger study that would have compared all of these different treatments. Now, this method is not perfect. It does have flaws, especially considering that some studies were a lot better than other studies, but the researchers did everything in their power to try and mitigate these flaws as best they could. And what the researchers found is that this is how the treatments are ranked most likely. Now in first place, we had dutasteride at the 0.5 milligram dose. I don't think this is too surprising for most people given that the rate of hair loss is believed to be proportional to the amount of DHT and dutasteride tends to lower your DHT more than finasteride does given that dutasteride inhibits more types of 5-alpha reductase compared to finasteride. I'm just gonna show you some of the results from randomized control trials doing head-to-head -head comparisons between finasteride and dutasteride to really illustrate my point here. Now, the thing that I wanna mention with dutasteride and some of these other medications is that dutasteride is not approved for treating hair loss by the FDA or by Health Canada or by most other regulatory bodies. It is approved in certain Asian countries, uh, but in the FDA, Health Canada, it's not approved. What does that mean? That means that the medication dutasteride has not been studied to the same extent as finasteride in young men with hair loss. Now it has been studied pretty extensively in older men for treating enlarged prostate, but in the, the population that we're talking about here, young men with hair loss, it, it has not been looked at to the same extent. It has not been exposed to the same level of scrutiny. So there's less safety data in uh, the population that we're talking about. You would also need to find a provider who would feel comfortable prescribing dutasteride to you off-label. Now, I personally know a lot of doctors who are very by-the-book people, right? If a drug is not approved by uh, Health Canada or the FDA, they're just not going to prescribe it. Moving on to second place, we had finasteride at five milligrams, and this is also very interesting to me. And it's interesting because five milligrams is the high dose of finasteride that's commonly prescribed for prostate enlargement. It's not the one milligram dose, which is usually used for hair loss. Now, I think based on how one and five milligrams of finasteride are so similar in terms of 5-alpha reductase inhibition and also in terms of DHT lowering, we often assume that they have the same efficacy. But the authors found that five milligrams of finasteride is likely better than the one milligram dose in the real world. Now, again, five milligrams of finasteride. This is an off-label dose. Five milligrams is not indicated for hair loss. So potentially less safety data in young men with hair loss. And you would also need to find a prescriber who would feel comfortable prescribing you this dose off-label. In third place, we had oral minoxidil at five milligrams. Again, very interesting. Now, if you know anything about minoxidil, you know that minoxidil was originally studied as a blood pressure pill. And researchers found that it caused hair growth as a side effect and reformulated minoxidil into a topical version for hair loss. And, and this is because topical drugs tend to be safer than oral drugs. And also it turns out that oral minoxidil caused this very rare but life-threatening heart uh, swelling type of side effect. Now that being said, if you're young, healthy, um, and you're being monitored by a doctor, you're probably not gonna run into this issue taking oral minoxidil, but some people do get that issue, especially uh, sicker individuals. 
And then obviously oral minoxidil not approved for treating hair loss. So less safety data in young men with uh, hair loss. And you'd probably need to f uh, find a prescriber who is comfortable prescribing oral minoxidil off label. Now, finally in fourth place, we had finasteride at the one milligram dose. This is the drug that myself and so many other people take for hair loss. It is approved by Health Canada as well as the FDA, and it has an excellent safety profile. It has hardly any drug interactions. The amount that you would need to take to have an overdose is just absurd, so very difficult to overdose on. Sexual side effects are very rare and reversible. So overall, very, very good medication. However, I am a little bit disappointed with how low finasteride ranked in the study in terms of efficacy. I think that finasteride with topical minoxidil is still a great treatment regimen, but if I was only taking finasteride and I was looking to get some hair regrowth, I would probably consider taking oral dutasteride rather than oral finasteride. Since then, unsurprisingly, in fifth and sixth place, we had 5% and 2% topical minoxidil respectively. Same thing as Rogaine, right? It's good, it's, it's, it's fine, it's better than placebo, but it's not gonna work any run, uh, wonders. Um, and then in last place, we had low dose oral minoxidil at the 0 0.25 milligram dose, which makes me think, what is even the point of taking low dose oral minoxidil, a drug that is not indicated for hair loss and also doesn't seem to be very good for treating hair loss either. So anyways, that is all I'm talking about. Obviously, based on the, the data from this study, there are other possible rankings. Um, this video is a huge oversimplification of the study, so I would encourage you to read it if you can. Now, the results section is pretty confusing since the authors are talking about hair counts, they're using talking about statistics, but in the conclusion of the study, they did rank the treatments in the order that I presented. This is how the researchers believe um, these drugs might rank, all things considered. Anyways, I wanna thank you for watching this video. It's always much appreciated. Now, I know that a lot of people are subscribed to my channel mainly for the hair loss content. So here, I decided to make a hair loss video about a study that I think is very important and very relevant and very actionable when it comes to treatments for hair loss and more, more in depth. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.